Hello students, welcome to the online lecture of Future Foundation Academy. Up to now, we started human respiratory system. We came across nasal chamber, pharynx and structure of larynx. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss about the long pipe called as trachea and then we are going to discuss the principal respiratory organ of human that is lungs. So starting with the trachea, these names we have studied in yesterday's structure. Thyroid cartilage, cricoid cartilage, they are present on the larynx. See, I would like to revise one thing. Suppose my hand is representing a respiratory tube. Suppose this is nasal chamber, this is pharynx and this is trachea. If you start with nasal chamber, pharynx, trachea, directly nowhere you will find larynx. Because larynx is not a pipe. Larynx is present on the trachea. It is this type of covering present on trachea which is responsible for production of sound. So where this larynx is situated, at the same point this trachea starts. So the starting point of trachea is from the location of larynx. It starts from the region of larynx. It goes down in the thoracic region up to mid sternum. Up to mid sternum here, then it divides. After dividing, it divides into two branches that is right bronchus and left bronchus that is bronchi. Trachea divides to form bronchi. So these long trachea, its main function is to transport air while respiration, while breathing, whatever air we take in, that air rushes in through nostrils, pharynx and then it goes to trachea and then into the lungs and same path is followed by exhalation. So trachea is also called as windpipe. Talking about the length of trachea, trachea starts from the larynx region, it extends up to mid sternum region. The overall average length of trachea is 10 to 12 cm, that is nearly 4 inches in length. But if you see the diagram of this trachea, you will see this dark semicircular regions. They are cartilage rings. Trachea is covered by C shaped cartilage rings. C shape. Suppose this is trachea pipe, this is ventral region, this is dorsal region. On ventral side, this type of C shaped cartilage rings are present. I would like to ask you two questions. Why this cartilage rings are present? And second question, why it is C shape? Why it is not completely circular? What do you think? What will be the reason? See, suppose these cartilage rings were absent, they were not present. Trachea would be a long muscular pipe equivalent to esophagus. Esophagus performs peristaltic movement while eating food. After masticating, food goes down in the stomach with the help of peristalsis. Suppose if these cartilage rings were absent, trachea would have become soft muscular pipe. So while breathing, it would also have performed peristaltis. And sometimes what will happen? Our respiratory system has various mucus glands internally to prevent dust particles, pathogens, various physiological process, mucus is produced. And due to this mucus production, while doing peristalsis, these tracheal pipes would have stuck with each other. The diameter would have been flat like this. So that so that the breathing would have been stopped because of that. So to maintain the shape of this trachea, these cartilage rings are present. So my first question was why these cartilage rings are present? To maintain the shape of trachea so that the walls of trachea should not stick with each other while breathing because it can stop the process of breathing. Second thing, why it is C-shaped? Why it is not completely circular? Suppose yesterday's lecture we have seen while studying larynx and pharynx that digestive system. Suppose this is buccal cavity, this is esophagus, here pharynx pipe is coming, this is larynx. This respiratory system pipe comes front. This crossing point is near the oropharynx. What happened? This tracheal pipe, T means trachea, O means esophagus, they are present aside of each other. These C-shaped rings are present only on front side. Suppose if they were present on the back side also, it would have affected the process of peristalsis of esophagus. It should not disturb the process of esophagus peristalsis. Hence, the C-shaped cartilage rings are present only on front side and they are not present on back side. Because suppose this is trachea, this is esophagus. Both are connected with each other. Both are present nearly together. So what happens? C-shaped rings are present only on front side. They are not present on back side. If they would have been present on back side also, this while performing peristalsis 
esophagus would have felt a disturbance because of that cartilage. Hence, this cartilage is present only on the ventral side. So, these are C-shaped cartilage. Coming back to the answer, trachea is also called as windpipe. Its length is 10 to 12 cm. That is, on an average, it is 4, 4 inches in length. It starts from larynx, ends up to mid-sternum, then it divides. After dividing, it forms two bronchi, right bronchi, left bronchi. Each bronchi we can call it as primary bronchi. This primary bronchi divides to form secondary bronchi, which further divides to form tertiary bronchi. All these primary, secondary, tertiary, all these bronchi are supported with C-shaped cartilage rings. These tertiary bronchi further divides to form a structure called as bronchioles and at the end of each bronchiole there are alveolar sacs that we are going to discuss in another lecture what are that alveolar sacs and what is their function so you can see the same also in the points this trachea divides to form two bronchi that is right bronchus left bronchus we are calling it as primary bronchi primary bronchi further divide to form secondary bronchi then tertiary bronchi and up to this tertiary bronchi it is supported by C-shaped cartilage rings. And this trachea has 6 to 20 C-shaped cartilage rings and bronchioles, at the end of bronchioles, there are alveolar sac. Internally, inside this trachea, suppose this tracheal pipe, I cut that pipe, internally, inside that trachea, there is pseudo-stratified epithelium and various mucus glands which produce mucus. So this is structure of trachea. Now, after trachea, we are going to discuss about principal respiratory organs of human that is lungs. One second. Now see, principal respiratory organs of humans are lungs. Lungs are total, they are present in pair. If you uh, discuss about lungs, I would like to mention a few words. Lungs are spongy in nature. Lungs are spongy in nature, they are highly elastic. Lungs are spongy, elastic, they are paired and they are roughly triangular in shape. So in first point you have to remember, lungs are spongy in nature, they are elastic, they are paired and they are roughly triangular. If they are roughly triangular, the upper portion of lung is called as apex and lower part is called as Base. So in second point you have to remember the upper part of lung is called as apex and lower part of lung is called as base. If you see the diagram of lungs, we are going to mention that left lung is smaller than right lung. Left lung is smaller than right lung because the main reason is due to presence of heart. The apex of heart is slightly pointed towards left. So that region is occupied, hence the overall surface of lung is slightly less. So as compared, in comparison, both the, while comparing both the lung, left lung is slightly smaller than the right lung. If you come back to the right lung, in fourth point I am telling, see this right lung, you can see three lobes. The uppermost lobe is called as right superior lobe, middle lobe and left, in, so right inferior lobe. So right side lung have total three lobes, superior, middle and inferior. But while this division, you can see superior and middle lobe is divided by a fissure, a sulcus called as horizontal fissure. And middle and lower lobe is divided by a oblique fissure. So you can remember like this, right lung is made up of total three lobes. One is superior lobe, second is middle lobe and lower one is inferior lobe. Between the superior and middle there is a horizontal fissure. There is a horizontal fissure. Between middle and inferior there is a oblique fissure. There is a oblique fissure. So this is about right lobe. But when you see left lung, you can see only two lobes here. One is superior lobe and one is inferior lobe. And both the lobes are divided by an oblique fissure. Oblique fissure. So in fifth point, you can say the left lung is divided only into two lobes. That is superior lobe and inferior lobe. And both these lobes are divided with the help of oblique fissure. Oblique fissure. What is the meaning of fissure? Suppose I am joining these two fingers. Between these two fingers, you can see this depression, this sulcus. 
this sulcus itself is called as fissure. Same thing you can clearly see that dividing lines. So right lung is made up of three lobes and left lung is made up of two lobes. But left lung has a specialized area. You can see this area. It is called as cardiac lung. Since our heart is pointed towards left, the left lung, left lung has cardiac notch. Left lung has cardiac notch. So this is uh, the some points about lungs. But if you can see the lungs are drawn a blue color line. Both the lungs are protected by a double layered membrane called as pleural membrane. I've written here pleura. Both the lungs are supported or protected by a double layered membrane called as pleural membrane. I'm telling that membrane has double layer means there are two layers of this membrane. Outer layer is called as parietal layer. Inner layer is called as visceral layer. So this double layer membrane is made up of two layers. External parietal, internally visceral and the space between these two membrane is called as parietal. So pleural space, pleural space that is filled with pleural fluid. It is filled with pleural fluid. So these are some points which are required for neat point of view as well as in the board examination. So which things we have studied today? We started with trachea. Trachea is also called as windpipe. Its length is 10 to 12 cm. It is supported by C-shaped cartilage ring on ventral side. It starts from larynx region. It goes up to mid sternum then divides. After dividing it forms a right bronchi, left bronchi. Each bronchi that is primary bronchi further divides to form secondary, then tertiary bronchi. All these primary, secondary, tertiary bronchi are supported with cartilage rings, which further divide to form bronchioles, which have alveolar sac. Alveolar sac we are going to discuss in a special lecture. And then we know that this complete trachea internally it is lined by pseudo-stratified epithelium. Then we came to the principal respiratory organ of human that is lungs. Lungs are spongy, elastic, pear structure and they are roughly triangular. Since they are triangular, the upper part is called as apex, lower part is called as base. Left lung is slightly smaller as compared to right lung because cardiac notch is present. Right lung shows total three lobes, superior, middle, inferior. Superior and middle lobe are divided with the help of horizontal fissure. Middle and lower, that is inferior lobe, is divided with the help of oblique fissure. Whereas if you see left lung, it has only two lobes, that is superior and inferior, which is divided with the help of oblique fissure. Left lung shows a cardiac notch. Both the lungs are protected with the help of pleural membrane. This pleural membrane is double layer, that is external layer is called as parietal layer, internal layer is called as visceral. And in between there is a space called as pleural space which is filled with pleural fluid which helps in protection, shock absorption, it avoids friction of lungs during breathing. There are various other functions which we are going to see while studying the mechanism of breathing. So next lecture we are going to discuss about structure of alveoli and we are going to study the further process of breathing. Thanks everyone. Stay home. Stay safe.